All right. Once again, great that all of you are here. And now we start the meeting, the open table, which we have announced for today, because the intention was we want to support you. We want to support all of our clubs in doing good public relations, getting more members, keeping the members they have. And to support you first, we would have to find out, okay, what are really your pain points? And for this, we have today an open table where we will discuss what are your topics, what are your challenges, what are your questions. And to get things going, we have a short introduction into all of the different topics we see from our side as interesting for you. So we have some short presentations prepared for you. We will have at very first the presentation from Sharuk as a general um, um, information about marketing itself. And then each of us will have a turn to do a short presentation and we will hand over just to the next one. And when we are finished, every one of you is invited to add some additional information, ask questions, and in whatever way. So if you have something as a question, please make a note or maybe write it in the, the chat so it won't be forgotten and we cover all of the necessary items. And as our first speaker of this evening, as I already announced, will be our PR manager, Sharuk. So let's welcome Sharuk on our virtual stage this evening as we do it online with that sort of applause. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, something very uh, important. That is about marketing. Now, some of you, because I don't know that some of you have already attended the session yesterday, it's going to be sort of a repeat, but it's going to be a shorter version of it. So let me just share the screen. And uh, you know, Larry King used to say that if something's going You just muted yourself. I, I, I didn't, it just happened. I don't know why. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I'm gonna talk about unboxing marketing. Now, it's not that marketing is unknown to you. It's common sense, but sometimes we just need a refresher. We need to connect. And today we're gonna to talk about understanding what marketing is at a very basic level. So PR and marketing are basically fancy words for something that is very foundational to humans. Can anybody guess? You can unmute and say, because I would like everybody to participate. Communication. <laughs> yes. Communication, a foundational word for PR and marketing. And what is communication in PR and marketing? Anybody? Because if you participate, it's going to be better. I'm not Connection. going to keep on talking. It's, I, I'm, sorry, what did you say? Connection. Connection. Communication creates connections. That's something I was... Uh, hinting towards um, identity image identity image uh, it's like how we look how we present ourselves that's how we're going to take things forward and that's For how me? we communicate even when we're not communicating that's what it is yes Juan yeah it's about uh, uh, saying loudly I have something that everyone no I have something that is useful for everyone that are listening to me, something like that. Is that marketing and PR? Exactly. <laughs> well, that's basically what it is. When we communicate with others, it is communication creates connections. And I like to present to you a concept. 
That is, communication is to humans like water is to living things. Can any living thing survive without water? Any living thing survive without water? Some form of energy. Now, that's correct, Sunita. Thank you. So, yes, one. Okay, so moving on. We cannot progress without communicating properly. That's like a fact. And at Toastmasters, what we do is we learn to clearly communicate. Just like clear water helps to uh, living things to grow, clear communications help progress things. So how Philip Kotler defines marketing is CCDVTP. Now, what is CCDVTP? Can anyone guess? I'm going to pick names now. Uh, Oscar, can you guess what's the first C? Communication. That you you guessed the C right, but that's the second one. Uh, Zendong. Captivating. You, nah. Zendong. Can you guess? Uh, your mic is mute. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, <laughs> actually, I will guess C? also, I will guess communication. Well, yeah, that's the second C. You got <laughs> yeah, that one right. I... So, what's the first C? Anyone? Uh, Ivan, Linda? Connection or contact? Connection. Contact. Create. Contact. Sorry, uh, before contact, what, what did someone say? Create. Create, yes. Uh, I, I, I heard them, but I couldn't guess. Can I, I couldn't get Who said create? It's Christopher. Hey, Christopher, that was fantastic. Yes, the first C is create, communicate. Any idea what the D is for? We do this. Deliver. Yes. Yes, Karen. Well, Karen, your memory is fresh. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. It's the age of uh, uh, figuring things out from Google. And I told you, Philip Kotler went on the World Economic Forum in 2010, and he said this, CCDVTP. He was looking more crazier than I was when I said that. And I could see some of the faces go like, What's he telling or talking about? Why is he giving us alphabets? But the, cre the creation, communication, and then deliver, what's the V for? I know Juan can guess it very easily. He normally says this to me. He's the president of Oslo Toastmasters. Craig, you can also jump in. Jules? Maybe it's visualize. Or uh, value. Or... Yes. That was Ritu, right? Yeah. Yes, Ritu. Deliver value to a target market for a profit. That's what marketing is defined at. And if you, anyone has the Philip Kotler book, if you see all the chapters, they're even designed that way. And that is what the foundation of marketing is. And taking things further, for Toastmasters, I've changed it a little bit. As I said, that communication is like water and water enables living things to grow of course there are other things required but without water without water it will be a huge problem similarly without communication we will not be able to progress we will not be able to communicate our ideas or our concepts and we will not be able to take things further so this is what we want to fo focus on that we take our communication to the next level through our communication. And that the aim of this marketing of Toastmasters is for progress. The more people who communicate better, the better it does. So I'll end with this and it's over to Craig. Take aim, aim.
Thank you very much, Public Relations Manager. And thank you all very much for joining us today. And congratulations, of course, on taking on your position of VPPR role this term. And as your VPPR role, you wonder, what does take aim mean? And one of the questions that I normally hear in a club officer's training is, what do I post? Where do I post? And most people say, well, we're on so many different social media platforms. I don't know where to post. But the first question I will ask is, what is one of the most useful forms of communication that we have as the VPPR role? But I won't ask everyone the question, but I will answer it for you. Because I had a Toastmaster member ask me one day, well, when we're taking our pictures as a group, Always remember that that banner picture and that banner is one of your marketing tools to let someone know like, wow, what are all of those ribbons that we have gained? You know, whether it's Beat the Clock or whether it's that Smedley Award or even just what is the name of our club and where they're located. But it's in terms of taking aim, what that definitely means is actually a way of getting or talking to potential members to keep that consistent message that is repeated throughout those different social media channels that you have. And one of the things that I definitely will say is don't try to post on every social media channel that you have. One of the things that you should do is ask your members, ask your guests. Yes, I did start off with the VPPR role, of course, in my club. And what I tell people, one of the good useful ways is to send that thank you note, a thank you note. And yes, I did send it to every individual guest when I did it. I used to run around the room way before the pandemic, gathering up those email addresses and sending a thank you note. And I would also put in that thank you note where we were located at. And at the time, of course, my club was only located on Facebook. And I was wondering, wow, did they actually pick up the email? And they did because over the weekend, I would start getting requests for people that wanted to join our Facebook group. And one of the things that I always tried to be was very consistent with my message across the board, keeping up when our meetings would happen and keeping that message going across the board with what Toastmasters is, what Toastmasters is about, and keeping the engagement with people. And one of the ways of engaging with people, I would always put out there like, what are the top ways of keeping your confidence within public speaking and things like that. And people would always ask me, well, because even my public relations manager has asked me, where do you find this stuff at? Well, one of the things that I did one Saturday and Sunday, I just went across the board on Facebook to see what other clubs post. What is their consistent message that they're posting on their social media platforms to get an idea of what they're actually posting? And, and it say it snapped one day like, oh, OK, these are things that I can pick up and post because I know I've had some Toastmasters say, well, is that copyright? Should I actually pick up that and post? There's no copyright when it comes to picking up posts from other clubs. Just, you know, definitely make sure that you change the description and what you're going to post on your social media pages and what you would like to. But to also to go back to taking aim. Yes, when you're having your meetings, ask your guests, always ask your guests, where did you find us? Because the reason why I say that, one of my clubs in, I believe it was Munich, we had a guest that showed up a couple of minutes late and we asked the guests, you know, in the middle of the meeting, we thank you for coming, but where did you find us? And would you believe this, Karin, where he found us at? And he actually said, I found your club on LinkedIn, because as you all know, I do a lot of postings on LinkedIn. I was very surprised to hear him say that. But definitely taking aim and keeping that message consistent throughout. What is Toastmasters? Where leaders are made? What do we do in Toastmasters? We're public speaking. And just keeping your consistent message throughout all your postings. But as I said, definitely find out where your guests and your members are most likely to go to to do a lot of activity for your club. If it's Facebook, Meetup, LinkedIn, and as I've noticed too, even some clubs are using Eventbrite. But always ask that question so then you don't say, well, I don't know, should I post on Facebook? Should I post on Instagram? Should we start a TikTok page? Just ask your members and your guests. Where is it that you definitely find a lot of our postings that are where you find us at? But as I said, keep that message consistent and you will definitely reach the progress that you want as the VPPR. Thank you very much. And I'll now turn it over to our branding execution lead, Jules Carter. Thank you, Craig. 
And that was a wonderful whistle stop tour through social media. While you're on social media or any other form of marketing, Toastmasters asks you to stay on brand. But why? Well, in doing that, I'd like you to consider the last time you bought a mobile phone. Did you buy the same type of mobile phone as you bought the time before? So if you're an Apple person, did you buy an Apple phone? If you're Android, did you buy an Android phone? The majority of people always say yes to that question because of one thing, and that's the fact that we feel comfortable with our phone. We feel like we can trust it. We know what we're going to get. There won't be too many surprises. And that is exactly what branding does for you when you as a club try to reach out and grow. It says to people, this is Toastmasters. This will be friendly, professional, helpful, and full of people like me who want to develop themselves. So that is why we ask you to stay on brand. And what does that mean? Well, there are lots of aspects of brand, but the th things that we tend to focus on are the visuals and the words. So the visuals you will find in the brand manual, which is in the portal on TMI. Every single one of you, that should be one of your best friends. Your other best friend should be me. And I am always here to answer your questions and help you wherever I can. So if you want to know if something is a good idea or a bad idea to be on brand, that's what I'm here for. But the brand manual is your best friend. It will tell you things like use the proper blue, which as you can see my screen behind me is the proper blue. It will tell you to use the burgundy, the yellow and the gray. And the easiest way to do that is to copy the little code that begins with the hashtag and copy that into your custom colors on whatever program you're using. And then that keeps you on brand. It's also about the fonts, which are Gotham and Montserrat. And so Sans Pro is the filling, and I can't remember the other one. I'm having a senior moment. But the idea is you use those because then it's the same message. People will instantly identify that it's a Toastmasters message. And then the other side of that is the images. And if you use the images, there is another unknown advantage you won't fall foul of copyright. As if you use unlicensed images, you can get prosecuted. So your branding so far is images, fonts and colors. Then we go on to the vocal or the, the content of the branding. And does anybody know what the content should be? It should be warm and it should be professional. Is anybody surprised? Yeah, it's basically should feel like a meeting. So if you're wondering about your words, it should feel like a meeting to walk in. Finally, as I mentioned before, I'm always here. So if you want any help, please let me know. There is loads of advice in the manual about using your logo and when not to use the logo. So with that, I will say thank you very much for listening and hand you now to Tim Spear, who will let you know what works. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jules. Now let's come to the point, know what works. And for this, I intend to share my screen see if it also works for me. Ah, there's the right button. Oh, 
Okay, you see the presentation? Yes? Okay, very fine. Now what works? Um, first of all, get some inspiration. I won't tell you now what works for you. Look out what works for others. Also get some inspiration. Then do your personal selection. What might work best from you, what you found out by others. And then reach out and connect. And for inspiration, as I just said, look what has worked for someone else. Is the next uh, club around next door in the next town, someone who got a lot of members, are they active on Facebook, on Meetup? Do they have a great website? Do they have uh, great meetings and guests, meetings, open house events, something else? Figure out what have they done to attract a lot of members uh, or to attract a lot of guests and turn them into members. So this is the way to get inspiration. And as I just said, there could be a website, there could be Meetup, there could be Eventbrite, there could be LinkedIn, could be Facebook, could be nebenan.de. Some of you might not know this, but there's actually a club in Stuttgart who is quite successful with this. Uh, um, uh, with, with this site to attract new guests and turn them into members. In English, it would be nextdoor.de. So they attract definitely people which are in living somewhere around. And so that's not a very bad thing to do. Local newspaper is also something to reach out for and figure out, can we put there a note, an advertisement, um, tell them that someone from our club uh, won the latest uh, speech contest on area division, district level, something like this. And of course, personal inv invitation and guest events can be quite helpful to get new members. What works for you? As I just listed lots of possibilities, you see here, don't put too much in your basket. As Craig also already said, don't try to post on all platforms. Don't try to do everything. If you try to do this, you might get a lot of rotten fruits in your basket because you cannot handle all of them usually. And um, look for the fruit that is okay for you. Are you already familiar with Meetup, with Facebook, with whatever platform? What? How much time do you have to invest to learn something new? Do you have other members in your club which are familiar with other platforms with skills, with something you need for public relations? Or are there people somewhere else in the other clubs? In our PR team, for example, <laughs> you know all of us now after this presentation at least, and you can ask for help anytime. What would be a good solution for you, for your club, for your intentions? So what are your skills and interests? What is your available time? What are your current members interested in? If you do a great meetup page, but none of your members has an account on meetup and doesn't want to put one up and uh, say, okay, I'm coming to this meeting on meetup, it would look quite strange to people to show up on this event because there's an event where no one is coming as it seems to be. As Craig also mentioned, Find out where your current guests are coming. How did they hear about you? And also figure out, are your current guests your target group? Do you want to attract a new target group? And find out some measurement for results. If you figure out, okay, how many members are really, how many guests are coming from which platform are we coming? Note this down. So you figure out over time, okay, most of our guests come over meet up most come over Facebook. Did something change when we changed our website, our Facebook uh, site, something else in our PR uh, activity? And so you can figure out what really works for you. And then reach out and connect. This time, I don't mean reach out and connect with your guests and members. Of course, you should do that. But reach out and connect 
with us, with the district PR team, get more inspiration, but also share your success stories with us so we can further deliver and distribute the inspiration to other clubs. Reach out to your fellow VPPRs, which you got to know in this meeting or at a club officer training or on our Facebook or LinkedIn or other platform. And then connect, reach out because together we are strong. Thank you. And now I hand over again to Sharuk to give us a summary or another story about PR and in the end, a summary of the meeting. Keep to the plan was intended to be the next topic for Sharuk. Okay, so I'll be talking about some of the tools. So if you can see the chat, I just shared a link. Now I'm going to blow my team's horn a little bit. So please, Jules and Craig, don't get embarrassed. These two people for the past two years have worked so hard, have really put in an effort. And it's kind of funny that people still ask them questions. Where can I find a template? Where can I find an uh, idea? If you go to this link, on toastmasters-95.org slash PRs hyphen branding. These two people have actually put in so much of effort. Every little detail that you need to be the PR is there. Jules has uh, and Craig have designed the canvas and um, I, I can't even thank them enough because when they didn't know me, when I was not selected as manager PR, these two people had already done it and I found those links and I created them on can be a witness to it if you visit the Oslo Toastmasters please copy paste our ideas I'm going to talk to you about another tool yes it's going to be AI please use it don't be embarrassed by it it will help you tell it this guy won this guy won this lady did something really well the general evalu evaluator really said something really interesting. Now can you create a news article around it? Send it across. This is not wrong to get your ideas into a structured way. Just do that. Another web, uh, website that I urge you all to join is, and I think I want to share uh, hopefully all the links because as uh, as Tim was speaking about, join the Facebook group for uh, our VPPRs. So connect with each other. There are people who are posting on it before, but now we're going to be posting different ideas on how to do this. You can share success stories. Something that the new VPPR to be at Oslo Toastmasters started is like featuring a uh, uh, a member asking him what inspired him about the speech, took one liners, made an article about it, sent it across. The more eyeballs see your posts, the more it will be successful. Does this make sense? No, okay. Okay, no, it makes sense to some, some people are still thinking, maybe they're wondering why is this bearded guy speaking so loudly. I, I'm trying to great, get some more variation, voice variation, you know, no? Let me tell you, end with the story, and then I'll uh, over to Craig, if he wants to add something uh, to this, is that, you know the story that I, uh, Karen knows this story, she was there yesterday, that I imagined this, that, you know, there was some guy who said, to Mr. Smidley, Ralph Smidley, the founder, over a hundred years ago, you are so eloquent. You are so expressive. Can you teach me how to speak to girls? Please help me. I need to connect more. You know, I need to be, and somebody came, I'm not getting an interview and so on and so forth. I need, that's how it started. But that's what it is. The communication, similarly, as everyone is saying, we're here for you. And at the, 
and I'm summarizing as well because I want to get into that after Craig and uh, Jules, if they want to say they have the final words. And then we're going to open the floor so that you can talk, ask questions, discuss things without our particular ideas that we can do together. We'd love to help uh, have your help for the District 95 for all of all of the countries. We want if anybody knows anybody in Iceland, if anybody knows a journalist, please, all four of us are available to support you. And if you need templates, it's all available on our web, on Toastmasters websites, and we can also help you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Sharuk. And I think with that, we can now open the open table, and we are open for questions, discussions, additional information from your side. Thanks for listening so patiently, and now we can all get active. I would like to ask a question. So, so far, we, we see mostly the PR campaigns we use internet. I mean, we all know that we use social media, whatever, website. Do, do you have an experience or do you think also something um, beyond the internet? Is there any strategy or experience, whatever, trips, mm -hmm, the tips, tricks that we can use also think about things beyond the internet because uh, I know mostly we are we are using uh, the, the internet for all, all the, the PRs. Can I start with that? Hmm. Yeah, Jules. Um, the reason I said that is because I'm old enough to have been marketing when there was no internet hmm. and still one of the best strategies of all more effective than any internet campaign is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And what that means is getting your members to spread the word. So bringing a friend, um, asking guests for their feedback at the end of a meeting and making them feel part of the meeting and getting them to bring a friend. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a member to bring a friend. So it's about trying to get people involved and engaged before they sign up and then also once they've been in make sure you write to them email them however you want to do it follow it up and get them to come back because once they come back a second time you know you've got a hot lead and you know it's worth pursuing so the personal touch I think and Sharuk I think you wanted to say something Yes, yeah, something about strategy is uh, Zendong, right? Yeah. Zendong, what happens is <clears throat> what works in your area? I was recently attending a webinar for new uh, PR managers and in 2023 that set it up. They said that you need to create events that are newsworthy. So if you have like a, 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 a speakathon, yes, we in Oslo had a speakathon. So, so many speakers, everybody writes uh, their speeches, they give a speakathon, write an article, send it to a newspaper. If you know someone uh, one in the, um, you know, as a journalist or someone who works in a magazine, invite them over to um, review as a keynote speaker. So, because they're uh, now they're also LinkedIn influencers who are writing articles, maybe living in your areas, invite them pictures that's newsworthy mm -hmm. so that's just one strategy uh, by the way uh, zendong where are you which club are you from uh, munich toastmaster munich toastmasters okay so yeah we can talk about different ideas and um, we're available that the facebook pr group uh, craig mm -hmm. if i said share the right link can you check uh, for the facebook just join that and put a question there mm -hmm. put the same question there and yeah we might be surprised as well, you know, like mm -hmm. um, Annalise could have a better idea. Yvonne 
a better idea. Linda may be doing something. Sunita may be doing something. They're already doing something. They're here on a Sunday evening. You guys are doing fantastic. What do you think, Peter and Oscar? Did I forget anybody? Tivij, Stefano, any questions? Let's open the floor for uh, communications. I hope it answers your questions. And mm -hmm. yeah, thanks. Yep, that's good. Yes, one. Yeah. Yes. I have uh, some uh, interesting information to share regarding uh, another channel than the internet. Lately, I'm working for application of fundings for Toastmasters in Oslo. And I found that if we are able to uh, create event like a youth uh, leadership program, uh, connect with a school, connect with the local community, then we spread the uh, the word of what is Toastmaster, what we are doing. And also I form a lot of um, information during the application because we have to think about uh, how we do business with other people. So if some, some organization pay anything for us, then we need to stand at our standpoint to understand what kind of risk we are dealing with and uh, why they need to uh, give us some money to do something. So what we, what I have learned in the last uh, three days is that I compile all the information, all the benefit of being Toastmaster, being communication, uh, uh, clearly communicate and being um, a, a leader uh, all Toastmaster education have given to me. Then I, I, I wrote some article or I wrote some uh, text in the application, and that I used to communicate. Like using the text I wrote to call people and to spread the word before the application already sent in. You know, so so in a way, we have a kind of reflection. We can do human-to-human -human communication. We can tell a story about Toastmaster. We can tell how we grow our club, how we have done in the so far during the COVID and everything else. So we connect with people. And before that, before we send in the application for fundings. So that's my experience. Thank you for sh sharing that. And... That's a great idea, and similarly, for if you if you're interested in starting corporate clubs, um, you can also do that for your own company. Um, Tim, can we move further to Stefano? Yeah, mm -hmm. Stefano has raised his hand. So, what's your yes, question? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, first, completely new the DBR role though. I'll really six at the moment, but I just had more a question um, regarding use of um, really Facebook and um, in in your opinion, how much important is Facebook to bring people and uh, into from outside into the club and people that are are people not on not in the club are people following actually Facebook groups. As I'm from Toastmasters, Mama. Just, what is your experience? What do you recommend, really, to get started? I, I think Craig can take this one. <laughs> yes, I can. Thank you very much, Public Relations Manager. Yes, I get that question. I hear that question a lot in club officers training. Which, you know, platform should I use? Which one works the best? Uh, should I go to TikTok? Should I do this? As it was mentioned earlier, you have to ask your members of your club and you have to ask your guests, where, where did they find you? Which one? Because I know when the pandemic hit, a lot of clubs have now gone to WhatsApp because I know, as we know, um, Ritua, you know, with the bridge speakers, you know, we use a lot of WhatsApp, I think, than more than we do Facebook and Instagram. But of course, we're on those platforms. But you have to ask your, your members, of course, to start off there first. Where are they definitely going to see a lot of the information that you're posting and which one works best for them? Because as we've had in a lot of our meetings, just as a PR team, I said there's been a shift from Facebook 
of course, over to LinkedIn, which really surprised me because I didn't know about LinkedIn until I was laid off of a job. And then, of course, doing Toastmasters now, I've noticed a lot of clubs now are setting up a lot of their pages that were on Facebook on LinkedIn. But to really answer the question, you have to go back to your members. You have to ask, are they really watching your postings that you do on Facebook, because you know I am, because I pick up everything and transfer it over to LinkedIn. But are your members definitely looking at that? And are they really engaged? And you have to go a step further as the BPPR and get the word out and say, hey, Malmo Toastmasters, we're on Facebook. Go home and follow us today. Or if you're in the meeting, give out the link then and say, hey, follow us. Come follow us on LinkedIn. We make a lot of postings. We even tell when our next meetings are coming. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Because as you know, everybody doesn't really pay that much attention to easy speak as it is. But with Facebook, yes, you have to do that. And hashtag uh, District 95. And what's the other hashtag? Craig? Yeah, District 95, and then make sure that you use our slogan for this year, as you see up there with Tim, is um, our slogan is um, reach for your dreams. And another way is tagging members that when you're writing up your post, tag member, because that's what I do. If you noticed on LinkedIn, I start tagging a lot of people because as I've told this team, when I took over this position, which was just newly created, there were only 325 followers on LinkedIn. We're now up, Karen. I keep bringing your name up. We're up to over 1,300 followers now because of what I've done to LinkedIn. And I think it's the best. Okay. Yes, yeah. I will type the hashtag. I saw that message. I will type the hashtag. Now oh, we have a raised hand from Divish. Divish. Hi, greetings from uh, Munich. Hi. So as um, Stefano said that um, he's new, similarly for me as well, I'm quite new to the VPPR role. So one thing that has helped in the last couple of weeks is creating a form on the website where any guest who is attending uh, a meeting has an option to click, like just click. Um, where do they get to know us from? Is it Meetup? Is it Facebook? Is it LinkedIn? Because sometimes it's also word of mouth and we see name of the person who who referred them uh, to be a guest. So that has been helping in a couple of meetings for us. So that was a tip. And one question from my side uh, would be, um, like to the district uh, 95 leads on on PR that what are your goals from for district 95 uh, PR uh, for us to understand and also better execute them uh, for the whole group? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, of course, our goal is to strengthen the existing clubs and if possible, found new clubs. And to achieve this, our yeah, goal is to support you as good as possible. So that's the main thing. Um, we have no, other than our current topic, reach for your dreams. We don't have a, a strategy where we say, okay, you should do this or you should do that to, to align with our district goals. If you find something that works for you and for your club, and it's not against our branding rules, <laughs> then we are all fine with this and, and happy to support you and share your experience and success in our district. Okay, hey, Sharuk, thank you for want that. Want to add something? Yeah, hmm. I just want to add a small little thing that I was asked at the recent. Uh, um, club officers training, I always get tongue tied with district officers training, club officers training, COTs, DOTs, it's like a word soup. But, but this is something that uh, normally people ask, uh, Divij, that whose responsibility is it? How do we take these things forward? And you know, uh, what is your uh, goal? Our goal is to support people uh, in the clubs as members, as the district, we want our clubs to be successful, growing continuously, because you never know when someone moves, when someone is doing well. So we need to stay connected. Communication creates connections, as Tim uh, said it in the start. That's what we want to do. So if you see this chart, District 95 has five countries. 
So if District 95 needs to produce a champion, it's not necessary that we get a champion. But if we all improve our communication, it's going to be wonderful. Not even our, in our professional lives, but also in our careers, uh, I mean, in, in our personal lives as well. So getting more people involved in the district, in the different countries, in the different divisions, in all the areas, that's what we want to do. That's what our focus is. That's why we volunteer for this um, round table, uh, ta open table, where everybody can support each other. And that's why we want to activate our WPPR Facebook group as well, where different ideas, like you give an amazing tip, is going to help all of us. I hope this answers your question even better. No, absolutely. I think, thank you so much for, for those words. And I feel, of course, uh, one of the main goals is to achieve that uh, level of uh, people who uh, who are supporting all the initiatives. But also, like as I was new in the role of PR, I was also reading about what PR is about. So PR is also about the image of, of the district. Like for me, maybe it is uh, directly for the club, but uh, also for the district what the people um, in, in these five countries actually think about uh, Toastmasters. So I think that is more subjective. So um, number of people in a club can always be measured as an, ob as an objective. So we also have our goals, which is adding at least eight more new members every year, which we kind of achieve. But um, how do we understand uh, the image part of part of the public relations? Was this still a question or was this more yes. than a, a comment? Yes, okay. no, that was actually a question. Um, okay. How do we understand, um, how can we create this positive image of uh, Toastmasters uh, in our district? Jules? I was just about to um, put my hand up. The brand manual is gonna be your best friend from that perspective. When you asked about what the goals were, my goal is for every single one of you, the VPPRs, to love brands as much as I do. Because when I see things from the Toastmasters world, what I see is the first speech, the icebreaker, and the amount of support and warmth that is given to that member regard regardless of how, um, how practiced they are. And I think that is what underpins our branding. The colors were chosen because they are professional, because we will be professionals and leaders and develop you. And then our words, we choose words that fit with everything that we do in our meetings. I did a little bit of psychology and communication was my topic in psychology and I often listen to people when I'm out and about in the real world so to speak and sometimes you can spot a Toastmaster or someone who has been a fellow Toastmaster because they will talk about things like support, feedback, encouragement, personal development, growth and in a way that is unique to Toastmasters. So I think when you're trying to create an image and you sit and you look at it, just ask, is this Toastmasters? Is this what I experience every week in my meetings? And then I can guarantee you'll be on brand. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jules. But I have to add to that, Jules, because as you know, um, I get to see all the flyers and the posters <laughs> that are done. And I literally almost scream sometimes when I see them. But one advice I definitely can give you, um, 
you don't know this, Ratuja, but I, I do a lot of workshops on the weekend when you all are asleep. So I'm sometimes up at two or three o'clock in the morning in Malaysia doing a branding workshop or a workshop designed around how you do flyers and you give that image out of Toastmasters. And one of the things that I found out because I was bad at doing this when I first took it on as being a club coach for a Spanish club, I thought, oh, the Toastmasters logo needs to go on every flyer that I do. And I come to find out that's not exactly right. And another thing that I found out is when you get the theme of the day, don't create your flyer around the theme of the day. I've had flyers because I'm actually in a WhatsApp group, which I can't actually give that out to you all because we've gone over our capacity at the moment. But what you can do is you could drop your flyers in and get feedback. And I see a lot of flyers late at night or early up during the day that are reflected around the theme of the day. And I remember, Ratuja, you know, we had our theme of colors, but you did a good job. Whoever's our VPPR, I can't remember if it's you or someone else. You didn't put the logo on it, but our theme of that evening was colors. And that's what the flyer was based around. But I've seen one before that the theme was based around something about someone taking a trip of being a monk. And I looked at the flyer and I was like, and it did, it looked like it was a documentary or something. And I put it in the chat group and the lady who was a member of the club, she said, yes, I know this is not a good flyer. They were trying to base it around my trip as being a monk. And that doesn't give the idea of, oh, you wanting to come to a Toastmaster meeting. To me, it made me think, oh, they're going to be, you know, maybe online giving a documentary. And what we mean by that is to take that picture off and put a picture of a group of people from your club that may have gone on a trip or something. And that's how you pull everyone in and you keep it on brand, of course, like Jewel said, with your colors and everything, but you also keep everything directed towards Toastmasters and try not to create your flyers around your theme of the evening is what we're trying to get people to understand when they do their flyers, because that's not what Toastmasters is. And I learned this very soon off when I took over doing it, especially at the division level, that basically what you're doing is you're not selling the theme of the day for your meetings. What are you selling? You're selling Toastmasters. This is Toastmasters and public speaking, not your theme of the day. Yes, once they get in, I think they'll like the theme, but of course, you are selling your um, what Toastmasters is and what Toastmasters is all about, which is coming down to it is all about public speaking. Thanks a lot, Craig. Yeah, I have uh, something to add uh, <laughs> regarding um, um, branding our meetings. So uh, I think it's... Um, about the mindset Juan, as well. Juan, Juan, if you don't mind, Christopher had his hand up for a very long time. Okay. Gave him a chance first. Sorry about this. Please. No, it's okay. He can finish up, please. He started already. Yeah. Please go yes. on. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what I mean is um, when you enter the meeting, when you have the mindset that, that um, I have to respect people, I have to respect their time being with us, I have something that I can uh, show them, tell them, and give them the experience of Toastmasters. So that, I think, um, that's the best brand for me when I show up in a meeting. To, to, to be the role model, to be the, the one who, who set the tone for the meeting as well. That's all I have. Thank you. But I'll take that a step further. Do you give out a guest package? Because that's another thing that people ask about guest packages. Do you give that out? No, not yet. No. Oh. Okay. But we so welcome think... all the guests. We welcome mm -hmm. all of them. We ask where they find us. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the meeting, we ask uh, uh, about uh, their uh, impression about our meeting mm -hmm. and uh, uh, about uh, if they want to uh, come back uh, next time. And also we welcome them. So it's about uh, connecting people mostly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Christopher, you wanted to? Yes, so Christopher and um, the new VPPR for the Born International Toastmasters. And this is my first role as a club officer. 
but I got lots of support from the older members. The president was once the VPPR and the VP membership who has also occupied a role previously. Okay. I have one question and a comment. So I'll start with a comment. Uh, recently, we thought about adding value or more values to the participants, to the members. And we thought it would be best to get more people join the club through the already existing members. And we thought of recording the speeches and the evaluation and publishing it as a podcast. And then people get to listen to their speech and the evaluation, and they also get to promote it themselves. And it gets more people to visit the club and probably become members. So this one tip that I can offer, we tried it. We have two episodes so far and in the past three meetings, we had about five people who joined as guests and four already registered as members. So I think that could work. Now, the question I have is regarding the website, club websites. I need help. Um, and I also need help with the social media management. I inherited a social media account that were almost redundant, and I'm trying to regzerate in the kind of way um, post contents. And this is not my area of strength at all. I have designed some flyers for the club meetings. Um, probably some of you saw it, and I would really appreciate if I can get feedbacks. And uh, you no, know, like this is not right. Um, maybe you can try this. Um, maybe us. As, um, as a message on any of the social media flat platforms you find it. I think this will really help um, us do our job when we get feedbacks directly on whatever we post. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I think that's a great idea. Um, Jules, Craig, actually, is that possible in one of our groups that we that VPPRs can post there something and get feedback directly. Which one would you recommend for that? What would you recommend, Jules? Because <laughs> you know I'm always screaming when I see the flyers. <laughs> I was halfway through writing a message in the chat, actually. Oh, okay. I was. That's okay. I can share it in the group. I didn't want to distract from the group. Um. Mm -hmm. One of the things I was going to say is if you're worried about whether something's on brand or, and that also means for the feel of it, by all means, drop me an email. I am more than happy to look at something and give you my views on it. I'd rather you do that than post it and we get Barbie sprayed everywhere. And believe me, that has happened um, last year, we also had issues with licensing, people using images that were not licensed. And again, if it's on brand, it can avoid you falling foul of any of those kind of issues. So uh, anybody out there, I'm ha more than happy. If it means I spend an hour a day sitting going through them, I would rather do that than try and pick up the pieces the other side and end up being the brand police because it's not a fun part of my job. The other thing I was going to say is also give me an email because my old day job used to be marketing, um, coaching for people. So I've still got some of my old resources. So I'm more than happy to send you a how to guide to start your marketing from scratch because it sounds like that's where you are. Although it's um, not Toastmaster specific. I just felt like that could be a real huge boost for for you and give you a real good starting point. So drop me an email. I will drop you my start pack for my, my old clients and that should help you decide how and what you want to post. God. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. We should send an email. Come. And, and also, Karuk, thank you for dropping my email in the chat. <laughs> and Linda, also, you were raising your hand. I have one one comment to make before you move uh, on. Okay. In terms of what Christopher talked about the podcast, 
I was actually at a meeting one day when someone asked that, and it is true. Don't record the entire meeting and put that up on YouTube or a podcast because nobody's going to listen to it because I know I won't listen to it myself. One of the things that they gave as a suggestion, as we all know, we always have new members or members that always want to know how to do a specific role because my club just the other day, they just had a meeting this morning. And one of the things that was brought up in our chat was, could someone take on the all counter role? And they said, oh, Craig does such a good job with it. I don't think I could take on the role. I had to put in the chat. Don't base it off of how I do it because I have my own way of doing the all counter role. Take it and make it your own. But if you could take just that piece of the puzzle or that piece or that role from the meeting and just put that up to show people how to do the grammarian role, how to do the all counter role, how to be Toastmaster of the day, that is the key. Thanks a lot, Craig. It's actually a great idea to yeah, inform about the roles with a video. <laughs> People might more be more interested to watch a video than they are to read, although reading is most times faster. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't work that well to get them interested in reading. Now, Linda, you had your hand raised. Yeah. Finally, right. you can ask a question. Okay. So first of all, hello together from Stuttgart. And I want to say thank you for all the inputs you already gave to us and also thank you Christopher for your question because for me it's also a new role in uh, VP PPR and that's why I am also very unsure to post something or to bring something new and that's why um, that's why I, I also um, think about everything I um, bring to an update uh, to um, to upload. So um, for me, it would also be very helpful when I'm not sure if it's possible or if it allowed or um, to send an email to you, Jules, uh, to check first and then to, to make an upload or something like that. And uh, what I learned today is that first, asking the members. So thank you, Craig, for the very, um, uh, very impressive statement. And then the second one is um, checking the branding list. And that's what I already found in the um, on the website, but not checking in detail. So that would be the next thing I will do after this meeting. So thank you for organizing this round table. It was a really good thing. Thank you, Linda. Ritu, you have your hand raised. Yeah, thanks, Jim. So I have one question regarding the post, which we usually do after the meeting is done for the evening, uh, describing how the event was, what, what has happened. So ideally, it is like from my last uh, uh, last PPR, I have received like it could it should be posted only on Facebook, uh, not on LinkedIn or something. But uh, is I just wanted to know is there restriction on posting uh, describing about the meeting on LinkedIn, or maybe I can change uh, the media of post medium of post every time I want, or how is that? Um, when you say restrictions, what did you mean? No, a restriction means uh, only putting on Facebook, uh, not on LinkedIn, because it is more professional and something like that. Can I ask you a question? Where do most of your members um, post their, their own personal social media? Mm, it is mostly Facebook. And why I am thinking of LinkedIn is because Toastmaster is also a professional forum where we Absolutely. learn about. And if uh, I see like uh, for my club, the LinkedIn, uh, if you see the LinkedIn, uh, the followers and that is very less than Facebook. So in order to attract more members, 
was thinking we should just tell them what we are doing rather we usually post about what is our club what is toastmaster and all it is but that's where we show exactly what is happening in the evening i feel like it will make an impact so uh, wanted to check on that i think the restriction from that one is your time if you have the time then there is no reason for not posting on linkedin um the platform all the platforms are available to us i'm not aware of any restrictions that say we don't um i think the the reason we talk about focusing and targeting is because of how much effort it takes to run a social media campaign i mean our own craig is like a little machine they're all running out and i could ne- i can't even keep up with with him following him let alone trying to put that much out so if you feel that you can do two platforms or three platforms then i would say do it and i would also say do it and see what your return is if you're building then it's something that's well worth the investment if you find after and i would say give it a few a good few weeks that it's absolutely um cactus is rolling in the desert then maybe you need to think about changing your strategy yeah but i don't know about craig or sharuk if they agree or disagree but i think it's just what you've got time for um i'd like to add something uh, jules uh was correct when she says talked about time but here it seems that the, because it previously it worked on facebook your predecessors has said that's worked mm-hmm. and uh, but if you have the capacity please do the latest research from toastmasters uh, again reference to the webinar uh, for manager prs uh, for the districts linkedin is more successful because people with professional backgrounds aim to improve themselves because of their personal issues, uh, of their personal developmental stages in their lives, they want to push and develop themselves. Uh, students are great to participate, but they have uh, the they have their priorities, their exams, so they're available. They're not. I mean, Cyril is the world champion at twenty four, and uh, was the world champion at twenty four last year. So there's no rule to it, but. If you have the capacity, please do post on LinkedIn. Don't forget the hashtags will support you. We'll take those posts. Uh, Ritu, where, which club are you from? So I'm from Bridge Speaker Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf, okay, yeah. So uh, that's completely online, if I'm not wrong. Uh, no, uh, it's hybrid. It's hybrid. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so just post it um, online on LinkedIn. You have a page, set it up. If you, if you don't have a page, set it up on LinkedIn it's up to you but as she said that you have to test it for a couple of weeks and then take it on to the next uh, level which you would want to focus on yes Juan you wanted to add something yeah I have uh, some comment uh, regarding LinkedIn and Facebook Uh, when I comment something in Facebook I have to think it's personal because that's only the personal uh, stuff uh, you, you, you share in Facebook. But when I comment something in LinkedIn, I need to relate to the organization, relate to uh, the companies there uh, and uh, mention about the benefit for the companies as well. So comments on those events we have on LinkedIn, I always comment with the benefit being uh, a Toastmaster or maybe a corporate uh, club in, in, in your organization that might change something, something like that. Thank you. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you for uh, comments and feedback. I have another question because recently I have seen like this post was viral on all the Toastmaster ch- uh, channel. Uh, I have used the abbreviation like Toastmaster of the Day, TMOD, SAA. So is it right to use in the articles which we are uh, going to post on this social media or we have to write whole thing, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster? Because somewhere I have seen like uh, it was uh, like some of the members were mentioning not to use abbreviation and then I could not follow up totally. So I felt like this is uh, here I can get more relevant answer. 
Uh, hard to hard to say. I, I would say, is it uh, are these postings for your members or are there as advertisement to attract new guests? Because for members, it might be okay to read the abbreviations, but uh, for new guests, they might get irritated about that code. What you can do is, if you when you're writing that article, you can first time when you're mentioning them, use the whole word and in the bracket, and then next time you write it, you can write the abbreviation. Um, it's an age old question to use abbreviations all the time or what, as Juan also pointed out, you've got to keep the target audience in mind. Tim was also saying the same thing. Keep the person who's going to read in mind. If it's the guests and if it is promotional, then use the full terms. When it is just for internal, like uh, for Oslo Toastmasters, we have an internal Facebook page. Don't ask me why it's, uh, I've inherited it. So we we don't we use we can use abbreviations there but when it's on the facebook page uh sorry thank you <laughs> uh when it's on the facebook page then we would write the whole uh, uh designation of the person i hope this answers your question yeah oh yeah thank you so much Sharuk. Yeah. okay Thank you, Tim, for that. <laughs> I did also think when you were talking about that, that we say to avoid jargon when you're speaking to a fresh audience, but you can also use it as a tool to get engagement. So you could just put SAA, as Sergeant Arms, and then ask people to suggest what they think it means or try and use it as a question or talking through it like that. It just depends on how creative you are with that post. Yeah. Yeah, I have some comment regarding the the um, abbreviation. Um, I, I work as a consultant in different uh, fields of expertise and abbreviation has like 800 different and uh, industry or industry has like 700 something so i don't think that's a good idea to to start with some jargon or it's like a tribe uh, language you, you need to be in the industry to understand it don't do it i don't think it's a wise idea to do it yeah thank you okay I see, Sunita, you have raised the virtual hand. Yeah. Um, well, um, I would like to uh, say something uh, first about the meeting. I'm really feeling uh, very positive listening, listening to all your um, um, information that you're giving. Um, unfortunately, in our club since last three years, we weren't having any VPPRs. And I took the role uh, last one month back and now it's all new to me. I'm, I'm in fact also new to Toastmasters. Um, so I'm really curious to know um, if uh, if you people can share um, your uh, public um, social media channels, what your clubs are having. I'm really curious to see what you're doing on the social media so that I can get an idea um, to create uh, something for us. Okay. Well, I might share from the two clubs I'm a member of. Um, in my home club in Ludwigsburg, we have the channel of, uh, we have a Facebook page, which is yeah, not that frequently updated. Um, we have a meetup. Uh, channel where we list our meetings which is uh, also not that well frequented by our members so but we get now and then some guests over these channels and apart from that we had we're very lucky that we got an article in a local newspaper a few weeks ago because we had a fifth anniversary and that worked quite well. So we got uh, some people showing up right afterwards, but also some people showing up some weeks afterwards because they still had that article. And uh, one person, um, 
very from the older generation because some people say okay you only attract uh people who still read newspapers but he brought his uh, granddaughter with him with next time who's currently studying in uh as a as a teacher so uh, you reach a lot of people actually by local newspapers and it's you might get more direct attention than by trying to scream loud in the in the yeah open web where a lot of people and messages are sent out I can add from uh, my Toastmasters club, Oslo Toastmasters, what I was able to do was there's a group in Oslo called New to Oslo. It has 40,000 members. Just talk to the admin. They knew Toastmasters. Normally they do. Speeches available majority of the time. And I just asked them if we could post the same posts that we're doing on our Facebook post and that got a lot of new members to come in and uh, when ask uh, when Juan asks as the president about feedback how did they find out about our club it's as Craig was saying that helps us understand so we have a Facebook page we have a LinkedIn page and that's what we update that's just the two things that we update and uh, just share the same post in different groups as suggested by all of us uh, and the best way is to get the members to like, share, comment. Um, this is the most important thing to get the algorithms on LinkedIn as uh, it was also keep the target in mind. Share the pictures that people uh, take during the sessions, post it underneath the club event photos. It will just get more uh, momentum. And that's what's worked for uh, our club. Jules or Craig? Um, I think our club's very much in the same situation. We've had VPPRs that have rolled through and um, not been very active. But what's helped counter that is Terrier. She's one of our members and she does everything everywhere and she keeps bringing friends with her and that has kind of sustained our growth for the last um two years I think so I think it's whatever works it's look look for what works for you while we've got Terry going out dragging people in it seems to counterbalance the fact that we've left Cecilia our incoming VPPR with very much a blank slate to pick up so yeah i think find what works for you and use your members your members are your best resource get them to share maybe post this their speeches on their own social media so it's not just your voice it's everyone's voice the more of us there are the stronger the message becomes Thank you, Jules. Juan, you want to add something or ask a new question? Yeah, I uh, want to share about um, uh, asking members to comment. So we, we need to tell them that they when they put something on the internet, on the social media, that's their own brand. So they need to be aware of what they put there, what kind of comment they, they, they give to other people. So if they want other people to look at the, them as a good person, then you give good feedback, constructive feedback, and some solution how to do it, something like that. Uh, that's the Toastmaster uh, idea uh, to, to shine out. And also when you um, comment something, just comment with the... Um, all you have ha and all you want to help other people so do you have something to give others instead of just comment something that's a kind of dead end comment you know you know, get nowhere no you you generate nothing than just your comment and no one can continue your thought in that comment so it's a kind of uh, you know like a chain reaction they need to understand all these things that's all i have thanks 
Thank you very much for all the responses. I really loved all your responses. And um, Jules, thank you very much for the branding, uh, what you um, cleared, um, what you um, talked about in the beginning, that um, I my first set of questions were about the colors and the fonts, what uh, the Toastmasters are using. And uh, you really answered all my questions in that uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sunita. Gabriela. Hi, all. Uh, Gabriela, a member from Leipzig, uh, Nuremberg. I arrived late, so I missed half this discussion. My question is about flyers, physical flyers, and having QR code on them. Not sure if anybody has asked this, but once I create a QR code, the idea is to link somewhere, and would you link it A? to your own club website, B, directly to where you have your meetings. And in our case, we use both Facebook and Meetup. So has anybody experience on this, on putting QR codes or anybody use flyers at all? This one? Uh, Gabriella, you have to keep this in mind what's the goal of the QR code the thing is as everybody is motivated and told uh, and try to emphasize don't overdo yourself QR codes are a great thing they will lead to another step just announce that the meeting is at this split time there are three things that you need to do basically one is before the event you need to post that this event is going to happen during the event, somebody needs to take a little bit of notes and just, uh, as per your capacity, don't overdo it, don't uh, get uh, overworked. Uh, just three things, best speaker, best table topics, best evaluator, tag them, create that post, and after the meeting, post that. That's good enough. Nobody is saying this is not a corporate sales target that you need to have like 5,000 members. You know, it's nothing, nothing like that. It's just that. So if you want to use the QR code, I use the QR code as somebody was also mentioning just to get the members as a guest book. But then there was a little bit of uh, GDPR things that we needed to keep in, uh, keep in target uh, when I was the VP membership. So, uh, and then I cleared it up and then everything can be done, but the new VP membership doesn't prefer using QR codes, so that's fine. In advertising, thing, if you want people to sign up to the meetings, then yes, go ahead, use the QR code. But if you just want people to show up, just say guests are welcome, uh, membership is open, and that's it. I hope this answers your question. Yeah, it's a good point. I would rather have them sign up somewhere because if I just leave the flyer, then I never know if somebody pick it up. Yeah, about the physical flyer as well, I'd like to add that's gonna cost uh, some money. So if the club has the money, then yes, and um, that's fine. And if this if there's something, please go ahead, do that. But in my experience, it just increases the cost and because the flyer will have a particular date and then they become obsolete. Or you can have big flyers who say it every week or every alternate week, it's there, please sign up. And that sign up sheet is going to be updated at the back end. That could be a better uh, solution. And I think that's how you would be practicing that yeah. Yeah. with a QR code. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shadow. You're welcome. Tim? Yeah, okay. I see currently no further raised hand. So that might be not too bad. But Linda still has one and Sunita came second from my point of perspective. But <laughs> okay, Linda, what's your question? Uh, yeah, I have a question because uh, we talk about connection and communication. So what came to my mind was in this meeting, would it be an idea to have a group or something like that uh, where every one of us is integrated or um, maybe another idea to 
like um, Annalisa Hock already did it here in the chat uh, to share uh, where we are um, public with our club. So do you mean, uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, do you mean a WhatsApp group, of a Facebook group? Uh, what what kind of group do you have in mind? Not as and, 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 and it's is is the main focus on keeping contact among the the. I, I think at well, least let's call it active VPPRs on on district level or. Um, I think, as far as I understood, Linda, or a question which came up before was kind of, can we get an idea how the other groups are doing? their presentations of their own club. Because of that, I was sharing the homepage, which mm. is our main platform where we um, mm. get oh. or where we get the attention by the guests. And mm. yes, before several people mentioned they have this, they have that, but no one shared exactly how to find them then. <laughs> and I okay, think that's okay, the okay. question now from it. Linda to can everyone share the details, how to find okay. the people? Where? <laughs> you, you don't need to go any further than the Facebook and LinkedIn of uh, um, the official Toastmaster 90, uh, District 95 pages. I'll share them again. You will see all the work highlighted over there of all the clubs that are sharing something. Uh, and Craig reshares them so that we can learn from each other. Uh, like the uh, Like the tools that we have. You can use any tools to recreate them. Go to the website, they were shared. Um, and um, you can view how they're posting. If you need to learn how to design the posts, I mentioned go to the district-95.org. Uh, in the PR section, you'll have uh, the branding site. So you just change the picture, you just write your club name, and you can recreate them. So it's because we want you to spend time on promoting. So if you want to see a lot of work done by a lot of clubs in District 95, you can just follow these pages that I shared here, uh, created by our PR wizard, Craig. LinkedIn, as he said, there were just 300 and now uh, we're 1300. Facebook group and uh, the official site. Did you get that, uh, Anna, Lisa and uh, Linda? in the chat I, yeah. I got the links yes yes so because again there are 144 clubs in district 95 that will be a lot of research to do so craig's taken it on himself we appreciate his work and when we like and share you comment on those uh, pictures and posts that you see on uh, uh, district 95 facebook page hey great idea thank you very much for sharing your reel you know, that will really, really help you understand how the algorithms also work. I hope this answers your question, Linda and Annalisa. Thanks a lot, yeah. Yes, Sunita, I think, had a question, right? Or had a, a yeah. virtual hand yeah. raise. Yeah. Um, actually, one of my questions is what uh, Linda asked, and you answered it, so I have the answer. But um, I have a general question. Is it Facebook on a decline trend, like a lot of users are leaving Facebook? Um, That's a very good question. Uh, and this was covered. Facebook or LinkedIn or any platform, Craig said it so many times. You have to ask your club members. Don't follow what other clubs are doing. That's why we're at both the places. Um, Facebook is also, for us in Norway, Facebook works. Link LinkedIn also works. Professional people are coming from LinkedIn. Community people are coming from. Uh, we got a lot of immigrant people. When I say immigrant people, I mean to say that they're skilled, highly skilled workers who've joined here in Norway. They were members. I think Juan... Um, Last week, we had somebody from Uzbekistan. She just started here in Norway. She found us. She was level five uh, member in uh, her own club. And uh, she looked for Oslo Toastmasters, Norway Toastmasters, and she found us. She came on, on to our club. So uh, there is no right answer, uh, Sunita. You have to do a little bit of asking around. And uh, I think Jules pointed it out. Just try it out and see which what works. 
don't get disheartened um, um. Uh, yeah. No, it's uh, we recently had our area COT and there um, all the clubs, uh, we personally are on Instagram active and we are aiming to be more active on LinkedIn too. Uh, but in the COT, we all the clubs, we discussed the, uh, which channels are working for them and a lot of them decided that they will climb onto Instagram and uh, we have decided to follow each other so that we get and get updates from each other and yeah, and help each other. That's exactly what uh, Craig said. You just have to follow. We are also on Instagram, uh, <laughs> but uh, the point is because we don't want any stone unturned. We don't want anybody from the five countries complaining that we're not there. So, <laughs> but uh, keep posting. Keep sharing uh, the District 95 page posts, uh, comment about it, ask questions there. We will definitely respond. Um, Thank you. Welcome. All right. Any new creative ideas, questions? And if not, that's not so bad because it's already getting late. <laughs> and um doesn't matter if you have questions later, you can reach us. You can reach Jules, you can reach Sharuk, you can reach Craig, you can reach me. You can reach out to all of us at once if you're not sure who you want to reach, who might have the best answer for you. And yeah can reach out by mail, by WhatsApp, by any group we might be in. Not, all, all, not only with questions, as I already mentioned, also if you have uh, a success story, something which was really uh, successful for you, for your club, or uh, what brought in a lot of guests, new members, something uh, which you found out which is really easy to share or to implement on your pages on your groups on your emails on your flyers on your templates whatever we are happy to hear about it and share with the others yeah can i add something uh tim mm -hmm. definitely this is a recorded session it will be posted on the vppr group um please share it with other VPPRs, ask them to learn from it, double the speed, however you want to listen to it. There are a lot of ideas. There are some great ideas about the podcast and uh, things like that. The website is there, the official uh, website, toastmasters-95.org, that covers a lot of PR material. So please join the Facebook group for VPPRs District 95. Go over the website of Toastmasters.org. There's a whole training for VPPRs, main roles. Uh, there's a lot of sources. You just need to manage your time. The best way I found was when I was a VPPR and Juan helped a lot. He says, don't overburden yourself. Just spend 20 minutes on PR activities and that helped a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Sharuk. Yeah, exactly, Gabriela. <laughs> Thanks for this, for these final words from you, Sharuk. And especially, yeah, be careful with your time and with your energy. Toastmasters uh, term is still a lot of time <laughs> until June, and maybe you want to even keep up for another year. So be careful with your time, with your investment, and. We are really happy that you invested your time this evening here. And it will be fruitful for all of us, I think. I wish you all a good night, nice evening, and hope to see and hear from you soon again. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. And of Bye. course, of course, before you all leave, a lot of thanks again to the whole team, to Jules, to Craig, to Sharuk. And also to all of you who shared your information, your stories, and yeah, giving interesting questions to us to challenge us.
Good night. <laughs>